Hey everyone, my name is Jack. Welcome back to the channel. I cover a variety of topics as they relate to real estate, investing, the markets, and pretty much everything as it has to do with personal finance. So if you like that sort of content, be sure to have a look around the channel. And if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. But today I want to talk about Sam Zell's new special purpose acquisition company, or SPAC for short. Because just over a week ago, we got the SEC filing for the SPAC showing that they're trying to raise $300 million to buy a distribution tech company. Now, first things first, I want to explain what a SPAC actually is, since they've grown in popularity over this year as things have gotten very volatile, and there's kind of this weird point in the market where things are very expensive, and a lot of institutional investors want to gear up for when things they think will become cheap. Because a SPAC, like I said earlier, is a special purpose acquisition company. It's basically a vehicle that a person or investor or fund can use to amass a bunch of cash from investors ahead of time before it eventually makes a purchase of some other company. So the SPAC is led by an investor, the investor raises a bunch of money into a sort of pool, and then that pool sits there until the investor is ready to deploy all of this cash on a company, which it then takes public and sort of merges itself into. It's really just a fancy way for investors to raise money ahead of time to then make a purchase. You might have heard about Bill Ackman's SPAC that's gotten a lot of news attention in that he's trying to buy a unicorn that is a billion dollar company that has yet to go public. So there are lots of different ways that investors can use SPACs to try and really gain a lot of leverage via a ton of cash while times are good and people are willing to give them the cash, and then they can use that cash to go and actually buy the company that they want to buy. But the thing about SPACs is they're kind of vague, since you don't know what the SPAC is actually going to buy. It's getting money ahead of time, remember? So you don't know what Sam Zell or what Pershing Square and Bill Ackman are going to be buying. So really, you're trusting them that they're going to find a good investment. And when they announce the investment, you could always decide to cash out again. But then you have the opportunity costs of lending them your cash, basically, for potentially a very extended period of time. But if you invested in a SPAC before the actual investment target was announced, then ideally you could cash out pretty well as long as the investment that the SPAC ends up acquiring actually turns out to be good. Because just like any fund or any investment, there's always a chance that what the SPAC invests in is not going to do well either. Okay, now we understand what a SPAC is, but what about this SPAC in particular? What's it doing and who's running it? For those of you who don't know, Sam Zell is a famous billionaire real estate investor who made a lot of money mainly in the office space because he kind of pioneered the office REIT in that he basically pulled a bunch of money together to buy office buildings, reposition them, then make a handsome profit on the resale. Now, he hasn't only invested in real estate in his career, and he does deploy a lot of money into other companies. In the case of the SPAC, it would be towards a distribution tech company. Now, I've covered what Sam Zell's currently doing in the real estate space on this channel before, so I'll go ahead and link a video above to my most recent video about him, so you can check that out. But as for the SPAC, the SEC filing says that we may pursue targets in any industry, and we intend to initially focus our search on identifying a prospective target business in North America within the industrial sector with an enterprise value in the range of $1 billion to $1.5 billion. In particular, we intend to focus on companies providing technology-enabled solutions in industrial and industrial distribution markets. Now, to me, based on what he's targeting with the SPAC at the moment, it seems like he's trying to hedge against retail and how it is falling to a lot of e-commerce and online retail as opposed to brick-and-mortar retail. And Sam Zell seems to recognize that people aren't necessarily buying less stuff, they're just buying it differently. And something in the distribution tech world probably is poised to do well if they can innovate and make processes smoother, since companies like Amazon and all those big online retailers are definitely going to be needing that help in the future. And he's going for a big one, $1 billion to $1.5 billion, not unlike Bill Ackman's spec that's going for a billion dollar plus company. These are big acquisitions that they're trying to make. Now what company he ends up investing in, it's hard to say what he's actually targeting right now. All we know is the industry and the general price range that he's going for, but that's a moving target. It could always change, and he might invest in a completely different industry or maybe a semi-related industry since a SPAC does not set itself to one specific target. We just know the guidelines he's going for, and investors who invest in the SPAC really are just trying to bet on the actual expertise and knowledge of someone like Sam Zell and that he'll pick a good investment in the long term. I'll definitely keep you posted on what happens with this SPAC, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that update. But we'll see whether or not he actually ends up in the distribution tech space and what company he actually ends up buying. I'll definitely give you updates on that either way. So anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you like this video, please like it since it helps the channel out a lot. Definitely let me know if you guys like this sort of content about what bigger investors are doing since I think it's important to see where they're putting their money or maybe where they're not putting their money, especially during a very volatile period 
live like this. And if you're even remotely interested in real estate, definitely check out my book in the description below, The One Property Retirement, about a simple strategy for building your retirement nest egg using real estate. I've made it so it's great for beginners who may be unfamiliar with the process, or maybe you're just sort of familiar and wanna learn more about how to actually invest in real estate and streamline your retirement investing. And if you do buy the book and read it, be sure to leave a review on Amazon as that would help me out a lot. But in any event, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, take care.